You are listening to an American Free Press podcast. Joining me on the line is Dr. John Virapin. Dr. Virapin, thanks for joining us today. You're welcome. Dr. Virapin, how would you like me to refer to you? Is Dr. Virapin John or some other way? Ah, call me John. I'm only John. Okay, John. Thanks. Now, John, you've written a terrific book called Side Effects, Death, Confessions of a Pharma Insider. I want to get into that in great detail in a moment. But before we do, for the benefit of the listeners, can you give them a little bit of background about who you are? Who is John Virapin? Well, I'm a simple guy. I was born in South America in a little country called Guyana. As a kid, my parents decided that we, the boys, would be sent away to Britain. We used to be a colony to uh, further our education. That's what happened. I ended up in London, went to school there as a kid. And then we all went studied medicine in Ireland. And then I was a bit of a, not rebel, but I was a bit of a truth seeker. There are lots of things I didn't understand having arrived in Britain. And the major thing that really uh, made me tick was why the color of my skin should make such a difference. So I sold my books one day and I took off and hitchhiked around the world down to the borders of India and came back, passed through Germany, headed for Sweden, because that's where I had met a Swedish lady that eventually became my first wife. I stayed in Sweden and started a family. And then while looking to start a career, I was offered this job as a sales rep for a drug company, which I uh, took immediately because it was a high paying job and I had a family to support and so forth. So I started out in one company uh, and the rest is history more or less because I decided to take this industry on as a career, and I did very well, if I may add. I started to move from company to company in order to learn the various facets and try to be as good as I can. I wanted to know everything about how this business works, and I was recruited on almost all occasions two other companies, to different jobs. And then I joined Eli Lilly and Company in 1979 as a sales manager for the Swedish affiliate. And then 1982, I was made the uh, managing director. And that's as far as you can go in that company at the time. Well, you can't go any further now anyway. Then from there, I was given an assignment in the Caribbean, Latin America, Central American area. I was director there for Lily, and then I um, started asking questions that I would relate to and as we go on in this interview, because there were lots of things the company was doing that didn't fit my conscious mind and didn't fit the way I thought about people and life and such. And they fired me after one month I arrived over there after being named the most valuable employee in Europe. And I had difficulty understanding why. Later, I found out why. And that is because I knew too much. Anyway, uh, immediately, a few weeks after I was fired from them, another company came and asked me to go work for them because they were the main competitors to Lily with insulin. And I was more or less a specialist in the products of diabetes. So I went and worked for them. I felt at the time that maybe I am getting out of the fire and going into a smoke. But not so, my friend. They're all dirty. All the companies, as I will relate to you later in this interview, mm -hmm. they're all just scumbag companies. Mm -hmm. Now, you're in Sweden right now, right? Yes, I'm in Sweden right now, but I only recently came back last year because my daughter passed away and I stayed here because I had a divorce in Germany with my German wife. And I've taken up the thread again and I'm doing whatever I can to create a change because the drug companies are still marching on the same old ways. They live on corruption. They live on annihilating the population. They live on profits. Mm -hmm. Was there a main motivating factor that kind of forced you to write the book, John? 
Yeah, well, I moved to Germany after I retired. I had a mild heart attack while living in America. I was living in Florida. And I got a consultancy job with several Danish big pharmaceutical companies. And then after I met my German wife, we met over there and I decided to come to Germany and I wanted to be in Europe closer to my kids who lived in Sweden at the time. So I moved to Germany and then while I took early retirement because of my heart attack from Sweden, that is, and I was sort of just laid back and trying to figure out what to do with the rest of my life. And then my wife or whoever it is that creates this sort of situation, blessed us with a little boy. And when he was born and I looked at him at the table while they were cleaning him up, I said to myself, I got to do something because he is not going to grow up to experience all the dirty stuff that I was involved in, especially with the drug companies. And then I went home and started scribbling. Mm -hmm. It took me a couple of years, but I got the book finished. And, well, to make a long story short, the book became an immediate bestseller. And it still is. It's six years down the road, and people still find it useful to read. Well, it's a timeless book. There aren't too many insiders that have gotten as high as you did in Big Pharma's internal structure who have come out and blown the whistle, are there? Let me make a distinction here because some people tend to say, I'm a whistleblower. I'm not a whistleblower. There's a distinct difference there. I would call myself an insider because I was on the inside. I mean, I worked more than half of my life, 40 years in this industry. So one would think that I knew something. And if I may say so myself, I know more than just something. Now, the distinction between the two is in America, whistleblowers get paid for blowing the whistle or squealing on somebody or something. Or they get killed. Some of them might, I don't know. But we're all in danger when you do something like this. Me, I didn't think about whistleblowing or telling anybody anything. I was interested in telling the truth because I believe if I told the truth, people will raise their consciousness and be able to understand that they should think more about how they live instead of just trusting what we trust today and end up in a grave or end up in a wheelchair or whatever, because that is exactly what's happening. And now it's not only big pharma, the governments, the institutions, the gurus, the researchers, the professors, and all of these people who are supposed to keep us safe, who are supposed to keep us well, who are supposed to run the healthcare system, make sure that our children grow up well. These are the people, because they're hungry for profits, they're killing us out. I mean, now they're talking about depopulation. Hey, where have we come and what have we become? Mm. Now, John, recently your book got a big shot in the arm because you're on, I guess that's called The Daily Show. And I don't watch TV, so I'm pretty ignorant about this stuff. But I guess there's a comedian who now has, I guess it's political type show, The Daily Show. What's it's, that guy's uh, name? His name is John Stewart. He's uh, got this show called The Daily Show, which is one of the biggest talk shows. It's a comedy show, satirical thing. I was on there a few weeks ago. And uh, not very much, but I was on the show anyway. There are several other things happening around this book. I did a documentary that's coming out now, maybe in a couple of weeks. It's going to be aired in France, where the book was recently launched in June. And then it was also launched in Italy. No, France in May, Italy in June. And after that, I received a contract some Hollywood producers who would like to make a movie of my book. So all of that is happening right now as we speak. And the movie is going to take some time. They're preparing now to put everything together and start filming. And, you know, the book itself since launch, and this is about five, six years now, five years ago officially launched, it's translated and published in 22 different countries. So there are a lot of people around who know about what's going on. I have a lot of followers, and it is my dearest hope that this will start some sort of change 
so that people's lives will be spared and they can enjoy the longer life that we are able to live these days. Mm-hmm. Yeah, what I really liked about your book is that it just doesn't tell the story about corruption in big pharma, specifically Eli Lilly, but the way you wrote the book, I guess your style of writing is such that it actually reads almost like a novel. It was enjoyable to me, and I appreciate that because I don't have much time to do all the things that I have to do, and when I pick up a book, you never know what you're going to find. But besides getting the information, which of course is my primary goal, I also had fun reading it. Did you think about that when you were writing it, or did that just come natural to you? No, that is just something that happened because I'm not a writer. Well, now you could say I'm a writer because I've published several books. And it's only a long time after the book came out that I was told things like what you're telling me now. It was just something that happened. But my inside told me at the time, be simple. That's my motto in life, be simple. And when I was writing, I kept thinking that will the senior citizen walking across the road to go to the pharmacy to pick up their prescription, they must be able to read this book and understand it. Not too much medical jargon or, you know, just write it in simple words. And even now, I mean, I'm writing another book right now. I decided that I write as I speak. Mm -hmm. And it's important when you speak that you're able to communicate with the other people or anyone else that you're speaking to. And um, that's, that's how I do it. You are a doctor, right? I'm a PhD doctor, not medicine. But I've been reading medicine since I was 14 years old. I did a PhD in psychology, so that is something that now contributes towards what I'm doing at the moment, mm-hmm. which I'll tell you about a little later. Okay. Now, we've got a couple of books out, and we're primarily talking about, obviously, side effects death. Mm-hmm. Before we close out the interview, John, let the listeners know what you also got on the frying pan. Well, like I told you before, I've become a truth seeker because the truth seems to be something that scares people. And today, as we speak, people know the truth, but they have difficulty accepting it. And that is why we're in the situation where drug companies put out poison and the people still go and buy it. The propaganda machine is so strong. It's so huge. And with all the institutions and governments and researchers and everybody involved, they have this cartel. They do what they want to do. And I can prove that to you right now. Do you know of any medicine that has been on the market produced by any company that cures any disease? No. No, my friend. And that's the correct answer. You get $5 for that. Is that five Swedish dollars or American dollars? Well, I only know American ones. All right. What is the currency there in Sweden? It's Swedish krona. Krona. So they haven't gone to the euro? No, they didn't take the euro. They just took the EU. They didn't take the currency. Now, what's happening around us is that people go and they run to the doctor. They get a prescription. and They go home and they keep quiet. I go out and I tell them, I said, hey, guys, you're doing the wrong thing. You don't need to take those things. And they say, oh, yeah, 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 we hear you. We know, we know. Next day, they go back and they run to the doctor. And the doctors today, a doctor is not a better human being. He's just like the plumber. He knows how to fix the toilet. The doctor is supposed to know how to fix you. The drugs are supposed to help cure you. But it doesn't do anything. It kills you instead. Side effects, side effects. And death. Look at the vaccines. Look at all the quick fix medicines, the painkillers. They're all just nasty poison and people have to stop right now. I came out of hospital last year with open heart surgery, triple bypass. When I came out of hospital, came to Sweden, sat down and and saw my daughter die. I held her hand a few minutes before she died. And she says, Papa, the cancer didn't kill me. The drugs did. And she says, I know you're working with that. Don't stop. Go get him. And I gave her my word that I will. Money is the root of all evil, they say. But I think the drug companies today, Big Pharma is the root of all evil. And that's why it's important that folks pick up your book, John. 
Side Effects Death, Confessions of a Pharma Insider. Just click the link there, and you can get it from the AFP Bookstore. It's $25, and I believe that right now it's being offered with a complimentary one-year digital subscription to the newspaper, American Free Press. So I don't know how long that's going on for, but take advantage of that. Side Effects Death, Confessions of a Pharma Insider by John Verapin. John, thanks so much for spending the time explaining all this to the listeners. Thanks for writing the book. It was a great book, and thank you for educating me, and I hope that a lot of folks pick it up and learn what I learned. Okay. You're welcome.